happy Wednesday. Happy, happy Wednesday. Um, let me, <laughs> yes, by the way, we have a branding workshop coming up. I did this infomercial, kind of infomercial with a colleague and realtor, uh, Nina Eliasadas, and she's with Women Council of Realtor South Bay. So we are putting on, I will be facilitating uh, part of their branding workshop and I'll be covering to the how to create your podcast in four simple steps. So if you are a real estate professional, industry professional, uh, make sure you check that event out. Okay, so that's my blurb there on that, why that's still up. Um, let me just go ahead and update my banner. So boom, you are watching Ready, Set, Real Estate. We are in episode 193. I'm excited about this because hot topics, especially the reality is a bit bittersweet as uh, people are kind of coming out of this post uh, pandemic era. It's been rough. It's been tough. And in fact, I was looking at the data in terms of sales. I think, uh, let me, let me look at the data real quick. I was, I was looking at something and it said the amount of sales that happens in real estate. Let me, let me bring it up. Give me a moment. Uh, I was on a, I was like working simultaneously. I'm like preparing for the show. I'm on a webinar, um, you know, learning different things. I'm preparing the slides. So, but I, I do want to share this with you because it, it does align with today's podcast. So what was the sale data? So sale data here says reasons folks are selling due to life events. You know, that's been my motto since the beginning of time. Uh, we assist people with their life events, right? Life events. So 22 percent. Um, of sales or reason for people to sell their property is as a result of a divorce. So 22%, 52% is due to mortgage default. So here we are talking about how to terminate joint ownership. California has updated their laws regarding partition sale, and that goes into effect January 1st, 2023. So it's already applying to any actions filed effective January 1st, 2023. I know uh, my attorney colleagues are happy about this is because now they have a way or an answer to address this just kind of difficult question. How do we go our separate ways uh, prior to this uh, new reformed act, including the name itself? Uh, it applied to heirs, like heirs of the property. It applied to those who were inheriting the property. And it said, this is the way they can partition or divide the property. But we know that there's tons of people who are kind of blending and mixing, cohabitating, partnering up to buy real estate, especially if you're in California and you've got to earn six figures to purchase property, right? Two six figures, meaning two income households, usually, unless you are that single income earner. All right. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Let me just jump into, um, gosh, that branding thing is still there again. Hold on. Let me find it and get rid of it. Hold on. Where is it? It must be in the comments. Is it still in the comments? Where is it? Oh, duh. It's in my name. Like my, let me just edit my caption. For those of you who are new to me, my name is Lisa Gillette, also known as super agent, broker, owner, co-founder, and creator of all cool things in real estate. I am your host of Ready Set Real Estate. And we are again on episode 193. So let me boom. That's where it was coming up from. It was like, I'm like, where is that coming from? There it is. Okay. There it is. Ta-da! I fixed it. I fixed it. All right. Let's jump into 2023 goals. Um, of course, if you are here and you know I drop real estate gems, this is you're getting awesome game for free 99. Please press one down below. Drop in uh, one. Let me know you're here. Press two. Let me know you shared it. That is the price of admission for all this real estate game that you get for free. Free 99. Press one lets me know you're here. Press two lets me know you shared it. Why? Because sharing is caring. Uh, I did also say that I will be uh, connecting more with my community on the Nextdoor app. So if you are here from the Nextdoor app, because I did create the event, I dropped the YouTube link. I want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for connecting and joining us here in our online real estate community uh, right here on Ready, Set, Real Estate. 
Okay, so what we jump into the show is we talk about real estate goals, um, in particular 2023. Write those goals down. We are in first quarter. Awesome things are happening. Now, those goals can be anywhere from you shooting to uh, increase your credit score. In fact, by the way, I am increasing my increasing my credit score. Like I'm excited about this. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. You know, like I, I'm not exempt from when the housing crisis happened, you know, been there, right? Been, you know, credit card defaults, um, the collections, been sued, all that whole thing. But I was able to recover. One of the things that I want to implore uh, on you in terms of the perspective of credit score, it's a snapshot of a time in your life. Yes, we are going to be experiencing different things at different times, right? There's a season and a reason, but that does not mean that, you know, what your finances are permanent because you are able, of course, um, <clears throat> I want to be sensitive to those who may uh, may have some hormonal imbalances or may have some medical reasons that they're experiencing different, you know, hardships and life events. Get it. I get that. But for those of you who don't have those reasons, um, you can pivot. All right. Ruben Pice is in the building. That's actually my family. And he's from way yonder in the beautiful, beautiful country of Belize, which is where my family's from. So uh, I, that was my real estate goal, by the way. Uh, not only did I visit Belize after many, many years, uh, last year, I achieved my dual citizenship. So I am uh, not only... <clears throat> American born, but my family, I was actually made in Belize. I was made in Belize. My mom made the voyage here. She traveled here and I was born here, I think what, seven months later when she came to this country. So I am first generation here in the United States as quote unquote American, but I am a dual citizen in Belize. So thank you. Love it when family joins and supports. So thank you. Congrats. Ruben's got his own goals as well. I think um, he's acquired, what is it, uh, Rhea's farm. It's a beautiful farm that he's, he's got his own piece, his own piece of land. So that is beautiful. I, co I commend you. I congratulate you. I see you because I know you're doing amazing things. Uh, he's in construction, uh, Pice Construction, doing a thing out there. So congrats for executing those goals, staying committed and uh, you just got to stay committed. You know, <laughs> the dream was given to you and no one else. So can't be mad if no one else executes. You're re you've got to do the work. All right. So great, great example. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to park 2023 goals there. We're in first quarter. It's January. We're fresh. We're already midway. So get in that momentum, writing things down, pull it out of the spiritual, right? Into the material. Things happen twice. Things happen twice. Everything in, into existence right? Man-made, woman-made, created, right? Anything into existence happened twice. First in the mind's eye, pull it out of spiritual with the vibration of the pen through writing it down, right? Through your mind's eye, co-creating it through all your excellence, through all your being, bring it out into the physical. As you can say, I'm having a fantastic time doing that because I've got tons of things that I don't share online that I see manifesting and that I've been co-creating as part of my life. I had to choose that though. So what I share with you is because that's what I'm doing, right? It works because I'm doing it. <laughs> All right. Great. We're going to be talking about some kind of uh, slash again. Let me bring up show topic here. This particular topic can be resolved, right? So you can resolve this with as long as all parties are cooperating. If not, you may have to consult legal advice. So with that, here's my disclaimer. The information provided on this show should not be considered legal or tax advice. Please seek legal and tax advice from reputable licensed professionals regarding your situation, regarding your situation. All right. We're in agreement. Got it. Good. Okay, so let's do this. I've got a sponsor here. Of course, this show is here to promote those with products, services in real estate, got something real, real estate related. If you yourself are a real estate professional, investor, author, broker, contractor, Pice, we're Pice Construction. Why haven't you reached out to me about your commercial? Get you out here so we can support your business, let people know more about you. Um, please reach out to us. Okay. I'll leave my information at the end. We are 
broadcast internationally on all your favorite platforms. We are, we are heard live on Wednesdays at 11, and then we broadcast on the replay, Spotify, iTunes. I mean, and realize that people are listening to radio podcasts more and more because there are more people commuting in cars. There are more people um, looking for ways to improve themselves. Personal development is going to have an all-time high this year. I know that. I see it. He's like, yes, yes, yes. I, I do need to reach out to me. <laughs> All right. So with that being said, I want to say shout out to Omnis Property Solutions. Also now extending into Omnis Property Inspections. Uh, we'll be right back after this sponsor break. Do you have properties that need to be maintained? For professional services that guarantee your property will stay safe and secure, Omnis Property is the team you want by your side. As a company, we pride ourselves on our best-in-class professionals, equipped with the latest technology for all your end-to-end -end property preservation needs. That means that from start to finish, our expert team can handle everything from accurate assessments to preservation projects of all sizes. Save money and time by working with leading experts that understand your needs and are committed to premier service. Get started today by contacting us for your project estimate. Visit www.omnispreservation.com or call 310-957-9132. Awesome. Thank you for, thank you. Thank you again. Welcome back. You're listening to Ready, Set, Real Estate. We're on episode 193, how to terminate joint ownership, how to ter terminate joint ownership. Uh, we're going to do today's uh, episode show classroom style. So yes, that means I have a slide to share. Make sure you grab your pen, paper, notepad, um, and that way you can take notes. For those of you who are new to me and maybe wondering who the heck is this gal? I've never heard her. Uh, well, my name is Lisa Gillette. I am broker owner of Devenio Estates, been in the business for 16 years, uh, certified in various things, particular pricing strategy advisor, foreclosure sales, uh, probate, which I, I enjoy because for me, it's a way to pay respects to the honor and the decedent uh, in probates. My client is the past uh, the person who has passed away. That is my client. Yes, I'm working with the representatives of the person who has transitioned. But for me, because uh, I, I just love when I do my ancestors work, I get to do that in probate and trust sales. So that for me is near and dear. And of course, I am also, I hold the designation as a seniors real estate specialist, meaning I am trained and experienced to work with the senior community, seniors community. All right. So that's who I am. By the way, we are kicking off our real estate boot camp for, for I've decided, <clears throat> excuse me, I have decided the real estate boot camp this summer is going to focus on high school students. So we'll, we'll do high school students. I decided I'm not going to do more than uh, 15. So I first was like, yeah, I'm going to do 20, but I really want them to get a lot out of it. We're going to do four week boot camp right here in our conference room in the office. My office is based in Gardena. So in addition to me already doing the real estate cohorts, classes with other organizations, again, we have been opening that up to middle schoolers. Uh, when I first started out, I even had some very talented young scholars as young as uh, in second grade matricul matriculating to one of the best middle schools in the in the state. And so they were learning real estate from me, from our program. So that's where I got my notoriety, if you will, is that I'm one of the, the creators of the real estate curriculum and movement called Real Estate 100. And so I'm excited about we're bringing all of that back. Now that we've kind of figured out this thing with the pandemic, uh, it's time, right? No more excuses. Get your butt up. Let's execute. And let's just, you know, let's pick up where we left off. All right. Okay. That was my spiel. That's my spiel. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> okay. I'm bringing up the slide here. How to terminate a joint tenancy. Uh, I did my disclaimers. I followed all the rules. And of course, I want you to remember, press one to let me know you're here. This is live. So if you drop your questions, ooh, by the way, I did drop a link now that if you'd like to submit a question, uh, and you want it answered on the show live because sharing is caring and we can all learn together. 
right? Those of you who are taking those L's or taking those, those losses, turn those losses to lessons. I saw Anthony Lee uh, caption that. Anthony Lee will be a guest on the show next week. He's my co-author and doing amazing things out there in Philly and has got tons of value to bring in terms of investing from single family to uh, multifamily. And I know he's aiming to buy his commercial, a commercial building, five units or more is commercial. All right, let's jump. In fact, I think it was 15 units he was aiming for. I'm not mad. Listen, somebody has some goals out here. I'm not mad. Okay, let's talk about this. Forms of joint tenancy. <clears throat> How do you get into a, a joint tenancy scenario uh, when you purchase real estate? Well, it comes in various forms, joint tenancy or tenants in common. What I have noticed is when people don't really um, <clears throat> do their research for themselves, it seems by default that joint tenancy will be the vesting. So keyword, drop that in the chat below. I want you to type vesting. So vesting, the vesting is the choice of how you take title to that property. Now, here's why vesting is very important for those of you are, who know I am in law school. I'm studying for finals too, by the way. Woo, finals is coming up. <laughs> finals is coming up. Wish me luck, y'all. Just, you know, I need all your, I need you all your encouraging words, your blessings to keep going. Uh, I was approved and cleared for for my finals exams yesterday, I got the email from the school and they said, all right, you've been approved and cleared. Your exam date has been set. Good luck. And I'm like, ah. okay, so that's a little bit me. That's me again. That was, that's a goal. I'm turning a childhood, you know, dream of mine into a goal. Uh, the pandemic and COVID created such an opportunity. So yes, it, it's been bittersweet for some but there has been so much that has been born out of that, right? So take the L's, take those losses to lessons. And for me, it was uh, it created an opportunity for me to go to school and pursue this higher education so that I can add to my real estate business. I'm excited about that. Can't you tell? <laughs> All right. So back to vesting. The reason why I was, I, I thought about this in terms of laws, because when you are choosing your vesting, you, in property, in real estate. Um, and I'm going to give you examples of what the vesting wording reads. Pe most people don't realize that you are already deciding what happens to that land when you die. It's already decided. It's already decided for you. So yes, vesting, V-E-S-T-I-N-G. Uh, thanks for those of you who are tuning in on uh, YouTube, LA Super Agent. Shout out to those of you who are streaming on the ERGJ Enterprises channel. My brother, friend, Evan Jefferson, who's been doing amazing things with the Black Billionaires Club group, still out here empowering folks through the streaming channels. All right. Of course, Lisa Gillette page, our Facebook page. We are an official Facebook watch page. All right. Ready, set, real estate as well. So wherever you're tuning in, Thank you for taking notes. Vesting. So vesting is uh, examples. I'll give you an example. Um, we'll say, uh, you know, uh, John, uh, as a married man, you know, his his he takes title in, you know, one, two, three Main Street uh, as a married man and his sole and separate property. That's an example of vesting. Um, ABC Corporation, a limited liability, no, excuse me, that wouldn't be, uh, so ABC Corporation, you know, a California corporation takes title, right, as a corporation, they're a corporate, corporation entity. Uh, let me see, um, James Barbershop, LLC, a limited liability company, that's the vesting the LLC, right? That's their, how they're taking title in, in and as a limited liability company. Um, John and Mary, husband and wife as community property. That's how they take title, community property, joint tenancy, sole and separate. Entities are treated differently, right? Um, as trust, as a living trust, as an irrevocable trust. Those are vestings. Those are vestings. It stipulates and it gives instructions to people. It puts the public on notice 
how that property is to be vested and gives instruction to the next in line, right? The next heirs in lines, the successors of interest. It gives them instructions of how that property will be transferred um, or succeeded, right? The succession of the next heir or an inheritor. Got it? So we see what's common in our, in my nature of business and, and in the real world in real estate, very easily family members, mother and daughter, father and son, mother and son, sister and brother, family members, aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews. However, the, the collective takes property, it will do so in joint tenancy. Then you have romantic partners. Romantic partners are taking title as, you know, Jane and Jim, right? Rob and Anna as unmarried, right? Um, taking titles, joint tenancy. Single, not unmarried. We use single. So I'll give you an example. Um, John as a single man and Anna as a single woman take title as joint tenants in legal property xyz description one two three property you know plot map that whole thing got it so there's there's instructions of your name your status usually marital status um it, and we're talking about people so i'm not going to discuss entities in fact i should do a show on entities so note to self come back on this topic and we'll talk about taking title in entities and llc's and how that, oh, that is a great topic because I see a lot of people on Instagram tell you, do this, right? <laughs> Instagram advisors, <laughs> do this, transfer your property into the LLC. And it's like, ooh, some of those loans have claws. Anyway, I'm not going to go there. Um, romantic properties and business partners, forms of joint tenancy. Got it? Good. Feeling good about that? Great. So that's where we are with how te joint tenancies are terminated. Now, here's the reality. Let me go back here. Let's start here. So the reality is, because I talked about the facts of how many, uh, what's the percentage of properties that uh, create a life event, or excuse me, a life event is created that results in the sale of a property. Uh, default on mortgage, somebody loses a job, uh, and you're in one of these situations, a family member, romantic partner, business partner, the other person can't hold their, their end of the deal, can't hold their end of the bargain. It creates a financial hardship. One person says, listen, the best thing we should do is get out of this because we're going to go down with the ship. Let's sell the property, uh, take our losses. Really, it's really take your gains, right? It's because you're going to maximize the equity in, the, in, in this current market and you take your proceeds, they take their proceeds and you go and you start all over if need be. That's oftentimes what I have to remind people, like when you sell property, you're losing property. It's not the end, right? It's the beginning of something new. You have to grow. You've outgrown this situation, whatever it is. It's time to start something new. And that's the hardest thing. People don't want to let it go. It's family home. Oh, we bought it X, Y, Z, sentimental value. I get all of that. But then if you're going down with a ship, you cannot help anyone if you cannot help yourself. So make sure you're consulting with someone that will give you the proper advice, run an analysis for you and give you those options and say, hey, if you miss the mortgage payment, right? Now you have this ding on your credit. Now you might have a foreclosure on your record. You're going to have to wait until you resolve these issues to re-enter the market. And if you do FHA, if you can qualify for an FHA loan, FHA is very forgiving when it comes to foreclosures. FHA is very forgiving when it comes to, you know, quote unquote, bad credit. Very forgiving. It's a story loan. So after three years of foreclosure, you can re-enter the market, right? Um, after having bad credit, you can explain what happened. I lost my job. I got sick. COVID happened. You know, um, I'm experiencing, you know, I've had to take care of a, a family member. So you can give that story. You can give the extenuating circumstances story. Okay. There's a lot in what I'm sharing here. There's tons of information. So if any of this resonates with your current situation or something that you've heard, something that you know someone's experiencing, 
go ahead and have them, you know, uh, tune in and also reach out to a local professional, right? I make myself available. I am an active real estate broker. Okay, let's continue. So as we see folks decide that now we've got to part ways, you might have one person say, I don't want to sell. I don't want to sell. Now, what do we do? Well, partition is the action of now you're going to have to force this person to make a move, right? And the reason why I want to talk about this is because California has updated their law about making this possible and making it easier, which I think is good because now we don't have cases bottlenecked. We don't have all this confusion. Uh, it opens the doors to other people being able to qualify to you know, do the buyout. I'll get into it uh, momentarily. What is a partition? Let's uh, deal with the terminology. This is one of the things that I missed when I started the show. I used to drop a real estate vocabulary word every month. I'm going to bring that back. I miss it. You know, the more you learn and the more you're educated, you then use the correct language. It puts you in a different sphere. It really does. It puts you in a different sphere when you're using the proper language, terminology, and vocabulary. Let's not overlook this. By the way, how many of you saw my post that I said the, the uh, I forget when university, every year they put out a list of words that they said uh, should no longer be used because it's been overused and they no longer, um, no, it no longer holds its meaning. The one of those words uh, was amazing. Amazing is people are no longer using amazing in the way it should be used. It's overused and overplayed. The other word that showed up was gaslighting. People that and goat, the goat, right? So this these words have now been listed as to be uh, no longer used, abandoned, abandon ship. Me and my abandon ship. All right. Partition, I'm going to read this verbatim. Uh, source of information is Legal Information Institute. You can Google that. <clears throat> Partition. A partition is a division of concurrent interest. Concurrent interest regards or means like joint, joint tenancy or tenancy in common in real property. Uh, I tweaked the definition because uh, it said in land and oftentimes we're not thinking of real estate in terms of land, although it is land. Uh, oftentimes people are thinking about, oh, the house, right? The house. So partition is a division of concurrent interest in real property amongst either joint tenancies or tenancies in common. Excellent. Let's talk about the types of partition. There's three types of, of partition. There's a physical division where the court divides the land, usually acres or applies to acres in rural areas. So there's a physical division of the land with exceptions. Let me address these exceptions. The court will have to determine whether it's feasibly economic to divide the land, right? Is it better for the parties to divide the land? And then they have to determine if the person who's receiving, let's say, part A of the land and, you know, 50 feet of that is for the city. Uh, I'm thinking because I'm <laughs> I, I was reading this about um, what's the it's called Queensland. It's like a Queensland law where uh, river banks and rivers, 50, 50 feet, anything that is alongside the water, uh, 50 feet is for the government. 50 feet is for the government. So you can put on, you can put things on that, but it is actually then considered public property. It's not your property. It's 50 feet from a riverbank, rivers is considered government. Even though on your parcel or your map, you you do the boundary, you're like, well, I have all this land. So that, that brings me to this point. If the court is dividing land in that scenario, person who gets the, the part with the embankment, right, uh, does not have the equivalent share to the person with part B. Right, thank you. Call a buffer zone. And so with the person who has the buffer zone, um, they don't have a equal share. So then the court may not deem the physical division to be an equitable remedy, meaning it's not fair. It's not fair because it's not, a, it's not an equal share. 
Um, the other exception is, is that the court has to consider zoning ordinances, um, city planning, when they're dividing or partitioning the land, is that also in conjunction or reflective of what the local ordinances, right, local, local government has in play for that respective land in that area. So physical division comes with exceptions. Don't know, I don't have any active knowledge of cases that are doing physical division. In my business, it ends up being um, part two or uh, type two and three, so sale. The sale, type of partition by sale means the co-owner, either one, and usually it's the one not occupying the property, the co-owner can force the sale of the entire property regardless if the other owner participates. And this is where things get tricky because when I have these consultations or conversations with individuals, I say, are you ready for this, right? Because when you, let, when you mess with the lion's den, you ruffle some feathers. People don't like to be ruffled out of their nest. And so you mess with the lion's den, people will and can go to extreme circumstances when it involves having to uproot themselves out of what they call home. So there's a co-owner uh, that the co-owner can force the sale of the entire property regardless if the other owner participates. And then there's a third type of partition. Third type of partition is uh, a partition by appraisal. I actually wanted to bring bring this back up. So folks who are tuning in and catching us know what we're talking about, how to terminate joint ownerships. <clears throat> this is where the new law has been updated for us here is that the a, a partition by appraisal, it, it usually was for heirs. So let's talk about the definition. Other owners can purchase interest. This oftentimes is known as a buyout of the owner of the owner based on appraised value, usually court ordered. Now you may ask, Lisa, if I wanna do this, do I have to go to court? Do I have to get legally involved and whatnot? No, the cool thing is, is you can do one of two things. You can communicate to the other party, here's my goal, here's my interest. You can consult an attorney to send a demand this is them sending them a demand, sending them, putting them on notice of your intent to sale, right? Your intent to sell and do the sale or do the partition sale. And it gives them the option to have the conversation. If you are a person that is occupying the property and you have been, you've received notice of a partition, it behooves you to consult an attorney regarding your scenario and get your real estate broker involved. Get your real estate broker involved. Shout out to LaDonna. Hello. She says, hello, Lisa. Hi there. This is one of our notary publics uh, doing her thing in the business. LaDonna, we've got to, you know, make sure we get your, um, got to get your commercial so more people know that you're a, a notary, especially because you've gone full time. Welcome. Welcome to the show. And so, and so it is important that you have your team. Our, our focus, at least from my perspective, I'm not a transactional agent or broker. I've not really ever been one. Just doesn't, it, <laughs> that has not jived with my spirit. Uh, I've always seen myself as a consultant, as an advisor, and recommending what's in the best interest of that client. And some of you know, how, when I started, things started slow for me, right? Is because at the time I was speaking honestly, and truthfully about the real estate market. I was like, yeah, 2006, I got in 2006, went up, what's 07, 08, and then boom, it busts. And so a lot of you know that my integrity and speaking the truth in terms of what's best for someone uh, has not been, it didn't just start, right? Didn't just start. This pivot into advisor, trusted advisor, or moving from transactional agent um, has been something I've been teaching, coaching for a very long time because it's just the good way of doing business and it's the long game of business. I'm saying that and sharing that is because as a real estate broker uh, and advisor, 
I'm there for my clients as part of their real estate uh, advisory team, as part of their top five. Now let's stop here and talk about who are your top five? Who makes up your, your, you know, the power of your mind, body, spirit, your PCP, right? Primary care physician or holistic doctor, your insurance advisor, who's protecting those assets, your financial advisor, helping you on the investments, your real estate advisor is helping you on the real property, on the real estate, making sure you're good. And your attorney, like this is your top five. This is your team. They all should know each other. They should all be part of your speed dial and your go-to when a life event hits, right? Marriage, divorce, death, job loss, natural disaster. Your top five should be on your speed dial. Okay. <laughs> LaDonna's excited. Right on. Thank you, she says. Okay. So think about that. If there's anything that you take from today's show in terms of this how to terminate joint ownership, you should also be having or putting together your team of advisors, which is your top five. This is your legacy building. This is how generational wealth is created. This is how you put something in place, right? You should have your attorneys, your advisors, your real estate broker, uh, financial advisor, holistic doctor, all these people, right? Your holistic team. And I'm going to throw therapists in there as well. I'm a big believer of therapy, especially right now. Mental health is so important, especially now as people are just finding themselves trying to get unstuck. So this is why we're learning this is because there's twofold. Some of you are going through some stuff where now you're thinking, I've got to go in a different direction. We no longer are eye to eye, right? We now need to pivot and do something different. And that's how be it in, in terms of the, the property that you own or the relationships that you're in, right? We're in relationships with the nouns, people, places, and things. Okay. She says, yes, absolutely. Okay, cool. I'm going to move on, screenshot this here. And then let's go on to the next slide. So let's talk about how uh, the process of a partition. So let's say you do decided well, you can do this amicably. We've done this amicably before where we've had this conversation and the brokers were involved, attorneys were involved, and you didn't have to go into the full blown partition action. So the partition action is filed in a court. It is similar to civil suit. You will file the partition complaint. You'll name all the parties um, that are interested. So lien holders, lenders, person occupying, the other co-owner. You'll put everyone on notice, the defendants who are named. You'll serve them. They have to be served for process, for due process, right? Follow the process, the court order uh, for serving people. Don't mail it. Don't do certified mail and copy. It's not recommended that you do this on your own, right? Don't do, don't try to do this because the, the issues then come up when your partition is contested, right? That means the other party is going to fight you on it. Now you've got a full-blown, uh, you know, legal action that's going to be pretty involved. Do know that there's no jury trial. The judge is going to make the decision and the judge appoints a referee that sees or oversees the process of the partition. You may say to me, Lisa, is there anything that I can do, right? Because everyone wants the, 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 the magic answer, right? That magic pill. Is there anything that I can do to stop a partition, right? What are my rights? Can I stop a partition? What can I do? What's my defense? You don't have a defense. And there's a couple of reasons why is because it's these laws and, and the more I've I delve into my law studies and understand or learn more about this. Real estate is very political. Real estate is very political and real estate there. Uh, when we look at the laws in place for real estate, it's about preservation of the land's highest and best use. I'm not going to talk about eminent domain and law and, and land that has been seized as a result of racial motivation. We know that. You've heard me talk about the show. We talked about it last time about Bruce's Beach, what's happening there, policing powers. We've also touched a, a, a bit on uh, the Palm Springs, right, uh, situation where there's a group of um, uh, African-American homeowners along with Mexican homeowners 
who back in, I believe this was 1940s, who had their property taken from them and burned to the ground with no notice and no compensation when the property was seized from them to build out what we know as beautiful Palm Springs resort areas or, or Paradise City. That's the unfortunate reality of the abuse of government power uh, when, when, when it's racially charged or motivated. So what we're seeing happening right now is various forms of reparations to groups of people, California being one of them, who has come up with how much uh, do we give back? How do we help? We talked a bit about that on the last episode as well. I think they said currently reparations in California for Black uh, Americans, those who are here, even though they said California was not a slave state, but they have descendants who were and are. They said it amounts to about 200, I think the math is $250,000 per descendant uh, of those who exhibited the inequities uh, of, of slavery, right, as a result of that. So they're still figuring out how are we going to come up with this? How do we pay this back? How do we pay it forward? So we are seeing the conversations. Um, I also want to add here, too, since I'm on the topic, City National Bank, uh, which is interesting and I'm not surprised because I was seeking to open my business bank with them two years ago, and they denied me uh, because I may have not fit their profile and they told me it was invitation only. And I was pleased to see that the, um, I was pleased to see that the Department of Justice has just charged them with $31 million, right? So they've settled at a $31 million fine <clears throat> for redlining right here in LA, City National Bank. So go figure. We're in the 21st century and we think these things are still not happening. This is why education is paramount. This is why we do the show right here on Ready, Set, Real Estate, because it's real estate empowerment. It's real estate literacy, along with edutainment. So in short, to answer the question, can you stop a partition sale? No, this is a no fault proceeding. Why? Because it's meant to preserve. You cannot force somebody to be stuck as an owner that doesn't want to be an owner. That's not how it works. All right. So let's get into this last bit here. We're going to wrap it up. You guys have been phenomenal here. So thank you for tuning tuning in on all of our um, uh, podcasts and channels. So here we have this act has gone into effect January 1st, 2023. It was formerly known as the Uniform Partition of Heirs Property Act. It is now known as the Partition of Real Property Act. And there's a couple of things to highlight. Now, if you want to know more, just go ahead and plop that act into the Google search for you. You'll get a list of attorneys who are talking about it, who a list of attorneys who are experienced in this, in this arena. And so I wanted to highlight for you what we should expect that has come out of this new and improved law. Number one, it allows all co-owner property, um, all the co-owners of the property to be partitioned by appraisal. So you no longer have to go through the judicial process of a forced sale. Real estate professionals, stay tuned because this is important. This is important because it, if it ends up having to go to the sale, I want to share with you what's important and what your role is. Uh, it's not required for the co-owner. So there's no rule that the co-owner has to agree to a buyout of their interest. So the co-owner who's partitioning the action or filing, filing uh, the partition, they don't have to agree to a buyout. And, and I'm going to let that marinate there, especially if those of you who have been thinking the old way, like, oh, they have to buy me out. For any actions filed effective January 1st, 2023, they don't have to agree to a buyout. It makes it amicable, makes it easy, makes, makes it cost effective, right? Less expensive. So it's great if you can all agree because the truth of the matter is you can't force somebody to be an owner who no longer wants to be an owner. Um, next, 
next uh, change here is that the partition by appraisal allows the co-owner occupying the property to buy out the other owner's interest without the expense of sale. So that means if we get to the point and we are agreeable that, hey, okay, let's let's go forth and see if you can buy me out, but it's going to based, be based on a current market value appraisal. That's called FAIR. That's called equitable remedies, right? It's FAIR that we base it on the market value. So the court order, the court can order an appraise, uh, an appraisal. Now, again, I did mention if you all agree able to move forward and not go forth with the legal action, these are things that your attorneys can work out. This is all negotiation. This is all negotiation. Your real estate broker can recommend uh, independent appraisal companies. Usually what we recommend in my experience is what we've recommended by way with the attorneys. The attorneys agree on an independent uh, appraisal company and they hire a third party appraiser that is neutral, that is not attached to either side, right? Because one side can have an appraisal and their appraiser says, oh, it's this much. There, and another side orders an appraiser and then they say this is much. And then now we're dealing with competing appraisals. Same thing with real estate brokers. You can consult with a real estate broker to provide um, a broker priced opinion, the equivalent of comparable, uh, comparable market analysis. What is the what does the comp say? So you ask two brokers, you're going to get two different answers. You ask 10 brokers, you're going to get 10 different answers. So valuation will vary. Do recognize that even though you're getting an appraisal, it's still an opinion. What matters is if you are going to agree on that opinion. That's what's key there is if you agree on the opinion of that appraiser. Now, this works wonderfully and only if all parties, meaning all the co-owners, agree to make this work. So I'm going to wrap up and end here for my real estate professionals. Pay attention to this next comment. Now, if the parties do not agree, and this has to go forth in a forced sale, this act now says it does not have to be court ordered auction. It now goes on open market listed with a real estate broker. A win for us. Woohoo! <laughs> a win for us. I'm a real estate broker. So this here is important that we are also involved in the, uh, it, the, the transaction of real property, right? This is important uh, because it ultimately says to people, you can work it out like this, there's less costs involved, but we've got to go through the full-blown cost of forcing the sale. Do know that the person who has filed the action can cover reasonable attorney fees and costs uh, to have divided the property in such a way. They can recover those costs. They'll ask for the court that, hey, I had to bring forth this action. We attempted to work it out. They didn't want to cooperate, and now it's going to cost it's costing me, right? Attorney fees, administrative fees. These are the expenses that I've had to incur. Now, there are some things that will affect the partition, of course, and the value, which is who's paying any existing mortgages, um, the carrying costs of the property, property taxes, insurance, et cetera. Also, damage to the property, damage to the property also reflects in by way of depreciation of value. So think about this. If you're owning property and you are you or someone you know is occupying and is just com uh, creating complete disrepair, deferred maintenance, they are messing with your equity. And I'm going to end on that note. Listen, if you have any comments or feedback, we'd love to hear from you. Be sure to send me an email at lisa at lasuperagent.com. If you're a property owner or a new buyer, first time buyer, and you want some great tips, I really love to give away the CFPB's uh, homeowner's Guide to Success is what it's called from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. If you haven't received your copy, would like a copy, please send me an email at lisa at lasuperagent.com. Also, I'll drop my uh, contact information as well. If you're interested in getting your business and information on the show, we are taking sponsors uh, 
for, for our various episodes. And you can sponsor multiple episodes throughout the year. We do air every week live at 11 a.m. Pacific time. That's 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we are available on uh, podcasts everywhere. See, that's what happens when I don't remind myself. Turn off your cell phones. All right. Listen, this has been wonderful and great. I trust you will have a powerful and productive week. We'll see you next week on another information episode on Ready, Set, Real Estate. Take care. Bye.